to do that. But I want us to look at Hebrews 11 tonight once again. And when you find your place, if you're able to stand, let's stand out of respect for the reading of God's Word. And uh, I'll do my best to get to, to preach this in about 30 minutes. And so you just uh, you listen, listen well, and uh, we'll do our best here. Hebrews 11 and verse 23, the Bible says, By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. And by faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had a respect under the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians, a saying to do, were drowned. But I want to draw your attention to the very first verse that we read tonight. All these verses uh, talk about Moses, speak of Moses. But our text tonight, verse number 23, and there's a phrase in there that I want to draw out for a little while tonight. Hebrews eleven twenty three. 23, the Bible says, By faith, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents. Notice this phrase, because they saw he was a proper child. Because they saw he was a proper child. And I just wonder, we have any proper children in here tonight? <laughs> You're afraid to raise your hand, aren't you? And, uh, and uh, well, I, 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 we, we do have some proper children in here tonight, just in case you're wondering. And we're going to talk about that phrase just a little bit tonight because they saw he was a proper child. And so you may be seated tonight, and I'm going to go to the Lord in prayer. And, uh, again, I'll, try, I'll do my best to get this done in 30 minutes, and we'll be on our way tonight. Father, we love you. Thank you for the privilege of being back at Calvary again tonight. And uh, it's been a wonderful day today. We appreciate the mountaintop day you've given us. And, uh, Lord, just a good day, a, a, a good day. We just thank you for your blessings. We couldn't do this without you. God, uh, and, and, and I pray as we talked about this morning that we will focus on Jesus, not the problems, not the predicaments, not the people, not the preacher. But I pray we'll focus our attention on the Son of God. And, uh, Lord, I pray that he will be what motivates us to go forward, and I pray that we will go forward, and I pray we'll realize that you're coming as soon, and Father, we need every bit of teaching and preaching that we can get, and so Lord, knit us together now, and teach us, give us power to hear, to learn, to be doers of the word, save any that may be lost here tonight, and or on the live stream, maybe even somewhere here this morning that are lost, maybe they're watching tonight, and I pray that they'll be saved this evening. And so, Lord, come and help us, please. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, we pray, and for his sake, amen. Amen. Wow. I was reading it, and you know I was reading in Hebrews 11. We've been in Hebrews 11 a lot here lately. Uh, the last, uh, we've been in Hebrews 11 about a month, I guess, at least. And we've been bringing different messages out of Hebrews chapter 11. And I was reading through Hebrews 11 again the other day, and I came across verse number 23. And I, just like you, I had read it many times um, but the Holy Spirit, just when it's time, the Holy Spirit will help something to, uh, to stand out, you know. And uh, the Word of God is always fresh, and it's always right and always new. But I came across that verse, verse 23, by faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents. And we're going to talk about all these things here in just a moment. But this is the little phrase that caught my attention. The Bible says, because they saw he was a proper child. They saw he was a proper child. Now, one of, the notice, one of the things I noticed is the Bible says when he was born. Moses is little. I mean, he's just a, this is not necessarily a toddler that's, that's running around. This is not a junior age boy. He's born, the Bible says. And, and pretty much as soon as he is born, the Bible says that his parents notice that he is a proper child. He's a proper child. Well, I, I saw that and I thought, man, I got to study that out. I want to fi find out what's going on here and what was it that was so special about Moses. And so I looked up that word proper. I love to do word studies. And, and I looked up that word proper, and it's the Greek word astios. And, uh, and this is what it means. 
How many of you out there, uh, you English scholars out there tonight, know what the word urbane means? Anybody? Boy, I'm glad I'm not the only dumb dumb. I, I, you know what? I looked that word uh, astios up, and it means urbane. And I thought, well, that don't help me. Uh, urbane, what in the world does urbane mean? So oh, I went to my Webster's Dictionary, and I looked up the word urbane, and this is what it means. It means courteous and refined in manner. Polished. Polished. And so the Bible says that they saw that Moses was an urbane child. He was a proper child. He was courteous and refined in manner. He was polished. Somebody says, wait, whoa, hang on just a minute, preacher. This is a baby that we're talking about. I know many of you here tonight are parents and you say, I know what babies do. And uh, babies cry. And babies soil their diapers, and that's not the only thing they soil. I mean, you know, and, uh, and uh, a, a preacher, I've had babies, you might say, and my baby was everything but polished. I mean, it, was, uh, it needed some polishing, but that's what it means. Uh, basically, the Bible is telling us this, that the baby Moses didn't behave like other babies, uh, which is, by the way, which is how they were able to conceal him. This was something that was supernatural. It was something that was not natural. It was something that was quite divine. And because he was just a baby, just a newborn baby, but he was urbane. He was polished. He was, you know, how do you explain this? He was courteous and refined in manner. I take that to mean this. He didn't cry like other kids did. And so because he didn't cry like other babies, they were able to hide him for three months from Pharaoh and his armies. Now, again, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm just trying to give some perspective here, and I'm just trying to think and, and wrap my mind around this. And, and when I read that, they saw that he was a proper child. There was something different about Moses. I thought, well, you know what? That probably makes sense. You know, it makes sense because of the, the circumstances and the environment that the Hebrew people uh, that they lived in. They were uh, slaves. They lived in abject poverty. And so I'm guessing probably among the Hebrew people, there were many infant deaths. I'm guessing probably because of the deficiency in diet, uh, they didn't have a lot of healthy food to eat, and uh, they were pretty much given what was left over. And so because of that, there were prob probably many deformities among the Hebrew children, maybe. I don't know, but I'm just, that's what I'm trying to think. And yet the Bible says that when Moses was born, Moses' parents saw something different. They saw something special about Moses. And then it hit me. Did you know, to be quite honest with you, every parent ought to see their child as a proper child. Every parent here tonight ought to, you say, Pastor, my, my child is not proper. And uh, will you pray, amen, you pray for your child. But hang in there with me tonight as we try to uh, give you the message that God has given to us tonight. We ought to look at our kids and I, listen, my kids are like your kids. And, and uh, you know, sometimes, some people said, that, you know, sometimes the preacher's kids are the most misbehaved kids in the whole church. And, of course, that's because the preacher's kids play with the deacon's kids. That, that's why that is. And, uh, but that, you know, sometimes there's, sometimes there's some truth to that. But regardless of where your kids are, uh, you know what? You ought, to, you ought to see your children as proper children. Your kids may be grown. Mine are grown. We, we're, uh, listen, just had our eighth grandbaby a year ago yesterday, and, uh, and uh, you know, we're uh, thankful for our, our kids. But even though our kids are gone, I still see my kids as proper children. Now, we notice here that that's exactly what Moses' parents saw Moses as being. And because of that, we notice they did some very specific things. The Bible mentions here in Hebrews chapter 11, 3, that I want to point out quickly and will be done. Number one, because they saw he was a proper child, number one, we notice they habilitated the birth of their child. Now, that's a big fancy word, habilitated, which just means this, they allowed Moses to be born. Look what it says. Hebrews chapter 11, look at verse 23. The Bible says, by faith, Moses, look at the next phrase, when he was, what's the word? 
when he was born. Now, is that important? It is important, and I'll tell you why. You understand that these were troublesome times. These were, uh, th- these were problematic times to try to bring a baby into the world. Listen, Jochebed, oh my goodness, uh, what a great lady Jochebed was. And, and, uh, but but the, uh, as I said just a moment ago, these folks are slaves. They're Hebrew slaves. They're, they're living in poverty. They're working in the brickyards and the slime pits. And, and they're creating all these uh, monstrosities for the Pharaoh and for Egypt. And uh, this was, a, this, listen, to be quite honest with you, this could not be a worse timing for a young lady to get pregnant and to bring a kid into the world. I mean, listen, not now. Maybe later, but not now. Maybe after the exodus, but not now. And yet we notice here that that's exactly what happened. And as I read that, I thought, you know what? It would have been very easy to terminate the pregnancy. Which, by the way, was uh, in, in total agreement with the culture of that day. In fact, hold your place, if you will, in Hebrews 11. And look with me, if you will, at Exodus chapter 1. Exodus chapter 1. We notice that in Egyptian culture, it was quite accepted to kill a baby. Uh, In Exodus chapter 1 and verse 15, the Bible says, And the king of Egypt, I'm going to go ahead and read Exodus 1 verse 15. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shifra, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, When you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools. In other words, when they're giving birth, he says here, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. And so what's going on is the Hebrew people are, 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 are propagating. They're, they're growing in number. And Pharaoh and the Egyptians are getting concerned about that. They're thinking, you know what? There's going to come time when the Hebrew people outnumber us. And if they decide to come against us, they can. And so Pharaoh comes up with this idea. By the way, we think it's a new idea, but it's not really a new idea at all. And his, his, his solution to the problem is, let's just kill them. Let's just, uh, let's just kill the babies. And so, because Moses' parents allowed him to have life, one of the greatest leaders in history was born. And so, I'm talking about, listen, the habilitation of life, allowing birth to take place. Now, I believe, I believe that's worthy of our attention tonight because abortion seems to be an epidemic that's only growing worse in America. Listen to this, if you will. This is, I, listen, this is just fresh, off the press. New findings from the monthly abortion provision studies show that an estimated 1,037,000 abortions occurred in the formal health care system in 2023, the first full calendar year after the U.S. Supreme Court's decision in Dobbs versus Jackson, women's health organization overturned Roe versus Wade. This represents a rate of 15.9 abortions per 1,000 women of reproductive age and is a, listen to this now, Calvary, and is a 11% increase since 2020. The last year for which comprehensive estimates are available. It's also the highest number and rate measured in the United States in over a decade. Now, I don't know if you're understanding what I'm giving you there, but this is what that article is saying that since they overturned Roe versus Wade, abortions have not declined. They have actually increased. They've actually went up. In fact, the highest rate since 2020. Now, church, listen, I, you know you know this. If you've been here any time at all, you know this is the truth. I don't preach politics at Calvary Baptist Church. And, uh, and I said that this morning, and, I'll, uh, and I, I just, again, would remind you that our hope is not in a party. Our hope's not in a Democrat. Our hope's not in a Republican. Our hope's not in a moderate or independent. Uh, but our hope is in Jesus Christ. Amen? And Jesus is right for everything that's wrong in our life. But as your under-shepherd, I do believe that it is in order, and I believe that it is right for me to come and to, uh, to educate our congregation about what is going on in our nation. And I know that you know that already. I don't have to tell you these things, most of these things. But abortion seems to be the flag standard of the majority of Democrats and liberals today. 
Now, you say, Pastor, don't preach that. Don't go there. And listen, I, you listen. You do what God tells you to do as far as voting is concerned. And if you're here tonight and you're a registered Democrat, it's none of my business. If you're a registered Republican, it's none of my business. But I'm just, listen, I'm not making this stuff up. I'm just giving you the truth. And if you are a Democrat, then you need to know who you're voting for. And you need to know what you're voting for. And, uh, but listen to this. It is what the Democrats absolutely run on. It is usually what they address first and foremost in their speeches and their talking points. Now, I'm not making this up. And I know that we have to be very careful about our consumption of news. You'll get discouraged and depressed if you watch Fox News all day long. And if you watch CNN all day long, you'll commit suicide, all right? But, but, but I, I'm just, I got the news. I got the news running the other day. And they were showing Kamala Harris, and she was up in some state doing some type of a, uh, some type of an event, and uh, pretty much they introduced her, and she walked to the pulpit, not the pulpit, but she walked to the podium, she addressed the crowd, and they <laughs> did a clap, and then she just cut to the chase, and she said, the reason I'm here today is to talk about abortion. So here's the thing, church, don't get mad at me tonight. They're bold about it. So shouldn't some God-called men be bold about it as well? And so it is what they're running on. We have politicians who believe a baby should be aborted right up until the time of birth. They call it partial birth abortions. And by the way, we're way past that now. And just so you know uh, what's coming up in three months, and this is not a political ad tonight, but I just want you to know what's going on. I want you just to listen. This is from the horse's mouth. Kamala Harris uh, this is her stand on abortion. Harris has consistently supported abortion rights throughout her career and has been seen as the stronger reproductive rights advocate compared to Biden. As a senator, she co-sponsored legislation that would ban states from imposing restrictions on abortion rights and voted against a bill that would ban abortions after 20 weeks of pregnancy. She vetoed the bill. As vice president, she condemned the Supreme Court's 2022 decision to overturn Roe versus Wade and became the White House's leading voice on reproductive health rights. Earlier this year, Harris visited a Planned Parenthood clinic in Minnesota. And by the way, her buddy was with her. I'll get to him in just a moment. Visited a Planned Parenthood clinic in Minnesota, believed to be the first time a sitting U.S. vice president visited an abortion provider. Now you say, Pastor, I wish you wouldn't head down this road too late or too far down the road to turn around now. Amen. And uh, now I, I want you to understand something, church. These people are not ashamed of what they're doing. They're very vocal. They're very verbal about it. They're willing to tell you point blank that they don't mind a baby being aborted. And it is time said that some preachers stood in the pulpits across America and, and called them out on this thing and said, let me tell you what that is. It is wicked. Wicked. You say, what about Tim Walls? Yeah, what about Tim Walls? The Minnesota government, uh, governor, Tim Walls, elevated profile as Vice President Kamala Harris's Democratic running mate, has led to wider awareness of his staunch support for abortion in his state. Listen to this. Including a bill he signed into law last year that removed a requirement to try to save the life of a baby born alive after an attempted abortion. Now, church, are y'all following me tonight? Do you know what that means? That means if a little baby is laying on the table, laying on the bed, and it is absolutely fully alive, he signed a bill that says the doctor cannot administer any kind of care to keep that little one alive. Church, I'm going to tell you something. Brother, Houston ain't the only one got a problem. I mean, we got a problem. We got, amen, amen, we got a problem. I'm, we got a problem tonight. 
And, uh, and by the way, just in case you think, you say, preacher, how do you know? How do you know if these politicians, how do you know if they're lying? Brother, if their mouth's moving, they're lying, I'm telling you. And uh, listen, anybody, anybody that will stand up and, uh, and, uh, and, and pass laws to kill little, uh, precious, innocent babies, uh, I'm telling you, they will lie to you. Now, what's your point, preacher? My point is we better be careful who we vote for. They refer to it as a woman's reproductive health. That's not what it is. The truth is most abortion is an alternative to birth control. It is used, listen to me kids, it is used to facilitate a lack of moral behavior. That's what it's all about. In other words, I don't want to get married. I don't want to commit. Man, I'm telling you, I'm trying I'm trying to behave myself tonight, but I'm having a hard time. And basically what they say is, you know what? I want to be able to jump in the sack with every person I can without any commitment, totally casual. And, uh, and if we make a mistake and, get, and if I get her pregnant, we'll just go kill the baby. Now, church, I'm going to tell you something. That's what's going on behind the abortion agenda. You mark it down. It's not about a mother. It's not about saving their life. It's about Murder, that's exactly what it's about. And it's wrong. Now, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why it's so wrong. Let me tell you, tell you why it's so morally wrong. Because God has a perfect plan for every created child. Now, listen, <laughs> we may have to skip these other points. I don't know. We'll just see what happens. Turn, turn in your Bibles. Psalm 139. Psalm 139. And look at verse number 13, Psalm 139, verse 13. Look what the psalmist, wow, look what the psalmist tells us about the unborn. Psalm 139, verse 13, he says here, for thou hast possessed my reins. Now, when you see that word reins, that's not like reins on, that you have on a horse, pull back on the reins. That's the, that when you see reins in your King James Bible, it's a word that means you're your, your organs. Uh, Reigns speaks of kidneys. And, and so that represents the internal organs is what that's talking about. For thou, talking about the Lord, for thou hast possessed my, my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret. That's conception. And curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Now look at verse 16, Calvary. The Bible says, thine eyes, Lord, thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book, all my members were, what's it say? Were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. And so you know what the Bible's teaching us there? That before that little, you know, the, the world says, man, that ain't nothing but a blob. That's all that is. That's just a blob. Uh, it's an embryo. Nothing wrong with killing them. Just an embryo. Just a blob. That's all it is. That's not what God said. God said, I've already got their members recorded. I know what color their hair is going to be. I know what color their eyes are going to be. I know how big or small their ears are going to be. I know what their little nose is. Amen. I know what their little nose is going to look like. God said, I've already got it planned out. And he said, as they grow, he said, listen, they're going to be formed like I want them to be formed. Uh, and so God has perfect plans for, for every creative child. Now, here's the thing. You may be here tonight. Listen, we're reaching, uh, we're reaching folks and, and, at Calvary, and sometimes we're reaching folks that have never been in church. And if you're here tonight, you say, well, pastor, what about me? I've had an abortion. And so... Uh, uh, no hope for me. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm glad that I can tell you that God's a forgiving God and God's a merciful God and God will forgive you and God will restore you. And if you're here tonight and, and you say, Pastor, I went down that road and I didn't know any better. I went down that road and people told me it's okay and, and I, I wish I never would have done it, but I did it. And so what, what about me? Listen, God will give you grace and God will forgive you and God will use you and God has plans for you. But I do want you to understand something. Oh, listen, that unborn life is precious in the sight of God. Listen to this illustration. A preacher and his wife have 14 children. Now she finds out she's pregnant with their 15th. 
They're living in extreme poverty. Considering their circumstances in the world population, would you recommend that she get an abortion? By the way, our culture would say yes. Absolutely. But had this couple had an abortion done, John Wesley never would have been born. And John Wesley was greatly used to stir the fires of revival in the continent of England and even, even, and even past that. Another illustration goes like this. The father is sick with syphilis. The mother has tuberculosis. They had four children. The first child is blind. The second child died. The third child is deaf. The fourth child has tuberculosis. And now she finds herself pregnant again. Given the extreme situation, would you recommend an abortion? And I'm telling you, church, most in our culture that are lost, unfortunately, would say, yes, do that. And had you aborted that child, you would have aborted Ludwig Beethoven. Now, what's your point? My point is this, that God has a plan for every child. And one of the great things we notice in this story about Moses' parents is they habilitated the life of the child. It was tough. It was a tough time to birth a child into the world. But the Bible says he was born. And so number one, they habilitated the birth of their child. Let me just give you the second one. I'll go to the last point and we'll be done. Number two, we notice they hazarded their lives for the child. Would you turn back over to Hebrews 11 again? They hazarded their lives for the child. Hebrews 11 verse 23 the Bible says, by faith, Moses, when he was born, look at this right here, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Oh, don't you love that? Amram and Jochebed knew what the consequences would be if they were found out. If Pharaoh found out what they were doing, they knew what it would mean. They would not only kill Moses, but they would kill them as well. But here were some parents. That's what I, I, when I read this, here were some parents who are willing to take a stand against the norm, who are willing to stand against the worldly, godless system and all that God would give us some parents at Calvary Baptist Church and some grandparents who would be willing to stand up against the godless system, who would be willing to stand up and say, you know what, we're not going that way. We're going to make sure that we do what is right. I remember many, many years ago, I'm, I'm thankful Mama's in heaven now. Daddy's probably watching tonight. And I'm thankful that I was raised. And many of you can testify to this. I'm thankful that I was raised by good godly parents. And when I was, when, when I was coming up, we would often, we, we would have a lot of fun as a family. And, and we would often, on the weekend, we would go out to the lake. Dad had a boat, wasn't very expensive. But he had a boat. And we would go out to the lake. And, uh, man, we would ski and we'd swim and we'd fish and we'd have a time. And sometimes we'd camp out at the lake. You say, well, preach, why are you telling that story? Because uh, when Sunday rolled around, even when we were camping, you know what happened? We went to church. And so we'd be camping on the lake. We'd have the camper up. We'd have the, you know, it was a pop-up. That's, that's how you camp back in the day. And uh, pop-up camper and the boat would be docked. But you know what? Sunday school came. You know where we were at? We'd leave the campground, and we'd go to church. And then we'd go to 11 o'clock service. Then we'd go back to the lake on Sunday afternoon. We'd play, have a good time. And you know how kids are. Man, when you swim all day, you're, you're beat. I mean, you're tired, sunburned. And uh, you say, what would y'all do on Sunday night? We went back to church on Sunday night. And there was a situation where there were several families that were camping at the same time we were camping. And my dad said, all right, everybody, get up. Everybody get ready. We're going to church tonight. And, uh, and my brother, my older brother, evidently was with a friend, his family. And, uh, and my brother said, we got to go. And he said, go, where are you going? He said, we're going to church. And uh, that mom from that family came over and confronted my dad and said, Bill, why don't you let him stay here at the lake? If y'all want to go into church, y'all go on. But why don't you let him stay here and play? And she caused a scene. You say, what happened? My brother went to church that night. That's what happened. 
And uh, you know what? Daddy did not relent. He did not let up. Boy, and by the way, now I look back at that and I'm so thankful that I had a mom and a dad who took a stand against the worldly system and all that God would give us some moms and dads at the Calvary Baptist Church of Union Grove who would say, you know what? We're not going that way. We're going to stand for what is right. Amen. And so I'm just cutting things out. They habilitated the birth of their child. They hazarded their lives for their child. But I want to give you this before we go. And uh, number three, we notice this, they hid their child. Did y'all see that? Look back at Hebrews 11 again, verse 23. This is significant. Hebrews 11, verse 23, the Bible says, By faith Moses, when he was born, look what it says here, was hid three months of his parents. Wow. He was hid three months of his, of his parents. You know what that tells me? They went to great odds to hide Moses from Egypt. Now, I'm almost done. Parents, hear me out tonight. Don't you be ashamed when you try to hide your kids from Egypt. Nothing wrong with that. And I know, listen, I know you... You, you, you go into school with different people and you're working with different people and they'll say something like this. Well, you just shelter those kids too much. You got that right, Jack. You got that right. Sure do. And by the way, plan on keeping on doing that. And will you just try to shelter those kids. No, you know what it's called? It's called hiding them. Hiding them from Egypt. Now that means this, that every home ought to have some biblical standards that are clearly established. What does that mean, Pastor? There are some things in our home that we are not going to watch. There is some music that we are not going to listen to. There are some places that we are not going to go. And kids, I want to let you know something. There are some people that we are not going to hang around. And so some clear boundaries ought to be set in your home. You say, well, preacher, if I do that, people make fun of me. You let them make fun, and you let them say what they want to say. But all I know is this. Here were some godly parents who lived in a godless society, a godless culture, but they were willing to hide that little baby from the world. And all that God would give us some parents at the Calvary Baptist Church who would follow that example and say, you know what? I'm going to do the same exact thing. If you have a pet... And many of you do. We have many pet owners in here tonight. It's crazy to get attached to those little things like we do. It's crazy. My wife lost her little dog, you know, a couple weeks ago. And, uh, and it was. Man, it was hard. Especially when you're empty nesters. I mean, you get a little routine. And, uh, and that was tough. But if you have a pet that you really love, sometimes you know what you'll do? You'll build a fence for that pet. Is that right? I mean, you'll, you'll spend hundreds of dollars, maybe even thousands of dollars to put a fence up. Now, wait a minute now. That fence is not there to make your pet unhappy. That's not what it's there. That fence is there to establish boundaries. That fence is there to keep your dog from wandering off into dangerous areas. It's there to keep danger from invading their territory. Several years ago, my family, I, I, I love bloodhounds, and my, my wife and kids, they bought me a bloodhound. It was beautiful, full-blooded, pedigree bloodhound. I mean, just gorgeous. We called him Banjo, and uh, laziest dog you ever meet in your life, but, he, but it was beautiful, and, uh, but I didn't know anything about, about bloodhounds, and, uh, but I, I know this now. They say, I think, they said a bloodhound can smell up to 20 feet below the ground, and Banjo always had his nose to the ground. He was always chasing a scent. I didn't know that when they got him for me. And so I didn't build him a pen. And so all of a sudden, he'd be gone. People would call. They'd call from Troutman, North Carolina, and say, man, we've got your bloodhounds over here in Troutman. And I thought, what in the world is he? And I'd go back, and I'd get him. And, uh, but wait a minute, I, I eventually lost him. You know why? I didn't build him a pen. I didn't, I didn't establish boundaries now, parents, this is what I'm saying, and I'm done. It's a shame, isn't it, when we will establish boundaries for our pets and we let our kids go totally unguarded. That's a shame. And by the way, if the world wants to do that, let them do it. But we ought not live that way at Calvary Baptist Church. Let me close. You can close your Bibles. We're done tonight. 
man, I'm just, uh, I got all kind of stuff here that I can give you. Somebody said it like this, how to train your child to be a delinquent. How to train your child to be a delinquent. When your kid is still an infant, give him everything he wants. This way he'll think the world owes him a living when he grows up. When he picks up swearing and off-color jokes, laugh at him. Encourage him. As he grows up, he'll pick up cuter phrases that will floor you. Never give him any spiritual training. Wait until he's 21. Let him decide for himself. Avoid using the word wrong. It will give your child a guilt complex. You can condition him to believe later when he's arrested for stealing a car that society is against him and he's being persecuted. Pick up after him his books, his shoes, his clothes. Do everything for him so he'll be experienced in throwing all responsibility onto others. Let him read all printed material he can get his hands on. Never think of monitoring his TV programs. Sterilize the silverware, but let him feast his mind on garbage. Quarrel frequently in his presence that he won't be too surprised when his home is broken up later. Satisfies every craving for food, drink, and comfort. Every sensual desire must be gratified. Denial may lead to harmful frustrations. Give your child all the spending money he wants. Don't make him earn his own. Why should he have things as tough as you did? Take his side against neighbors, against teachers, and policemen. They're all against him. When he gets into real trouble, make up excuses for yourself by saying, I never could do anything with him. He's just a bad seed. And then it said, number 12, prepare for a life of grief. Well, that's true, isn't it? By the way, that's how the world does it. No wonder we got problems today. Somebody said, I took a piece of plastic clay and idly fashioned it one day. And as my fingers pressed it still, it moved and yielded to my will. I came again when days were past. The bit of clay was hard at last. The form I gave it, it still bore. But I could change that form no more. I took a piece of living clay and gently formed it day by day and molded with my power and art a young child's soft and yielding heart. I came again when years were gone. It was a man I looked upon. He still that early impress wore, and I could change him nevermore. Oh, man. Parents, you know what that little poem is saying? You better start now. Man, I look around this room, and I see these parents. I see Raphael and Stephanie. I see Ethan and Heaven and so many different parents, young homes, young parents. Hey, parents, don't you wait till they're 16 years old. You've waited too late. You better start right now. Amen. Man, you, you better start molding them and impressing them and setting the right example for them because they're going to do, ultimately, they're going to do what they see. Amen. Oh, that God would give us godly homes in America again. Would you bow your heads with us tonight? Father, we love you. Thank you so much for the time we've had together tonight. Lord, I hope it's made sense. I hope we haven't rambled tonight. Lord, help us to be a, a godly nation again. Father, forgive us for killing the unborn. Forgive us, God, for our immoralities. Lord, forgive us for our callousness and our coldness. Lord, we often talk about Hitler. Lord, killing six million innocent Jews in the Holocaust. And yet, Lord, every single year in America, we're killing over a million babies. God, help us tonight. And Lord, I pray that you'd give us some parents, Lord, like Amram and Jochebed, who would say, we're not going with this Egyptian culture. We're not following that path. Others may go that way. Others may raise their kids like Egyptians. But we're not doing that. We're going to hide our kid. We're going to shelter him. We're going to teach him and we're going to train him what's right. Father, just tonight, burden our hearts for this next generation. And I pray that we'll be the parents and the grandparents and sometimes even the great-grandparents that you want us to be. And we sure thank you, Lord, 
Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Just a question or two. I wonder how many are here tonight and you'd say, Pastor, if I died this evening, I'm not 100% sure that I'd go to heaven, but I care enough to slip up my hand and let you pray for me. Is there one like that here tonight? And you'd say, Preacher, that's me. If I died tonight, I'm not sure I would go to heaven. Would you remember me in your prayers? And right now, you'd slip your hand up. Is there one like that anywhere? you just slip your hand up right now. Preacher, would you pray for me? Would you pray for me? I see that hand. Thank you so much. I appreciate honest folks. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Is there somebody else tonight? Pastor, if I died, I'm not 100% sure I'd go to heaven. But I do care enough to raise my hand. Anybody else? Can I pray for you tonight? In just a moment, we're going to stand. And our heads are going to be bowed. And if you're here tonight and you raised your hand, there's going to be some folks up here in the altar. And they have a Bible in their hand. And I want you to come, and they'll take that Bible, show you how you can know that you're going to spend eternity in heaven. They're going to show you how you can be saved. And I hope you'll come. Now, if you're scared to come, you just ask somebody to come with you. And they'll come. They'll come with you. But here's the other part of the invitation. I just wonder tonight, are there some parents, maybe some young parents, that need to just tiptoe down to this altar tonight and just dedicate their homes to God? Maybe you have teenagers this evening. And you say, wow, Pastor, I never realized what kind of challenge that was going to be. And tonight you'd come. And you'd find your way to this old-fashioned altar and say, Lord, help me to be the parents that you want me to be. And then some of you tonight have kids that are wayward. Some of you have children, and they've gotten off course. I mean, they're just, you love them. You love them to death. But they just got off course. And they're away from the will of God tonight. They're not where they need to be. I'm going to invite you to come tonight. And I'm going to invite you just to, just to mention their name to the Lord. Pray for them this evening that God would call them back and reclaim them this evening and so with our heads bowed let's all stand around the house Lord thank you for being so good to us thank you for letting us be here tonight Lord would you help tonight I hear folks coming around the altars oh God I pray that you would give them the desires of their hearts Lord some of these are praying for their homes Lord some of these are praying for their kids some of these Lord, have adult children. And Lord, they've slipped away from the will of God. Father, help them tonight. God, I pray you'd, you'd help them to come back to the will of God again. And then, Lord, I pray for those that are lost. Father, tonight, would you help them to come and let us take a Bible and show them how they can know Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Help them to do that tonight, please. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. If you're here this evening and you say, Pastor, that's me. I'm not sure I'm saved. Would you just right now, would you go to one of these aisles and just make your way down? And if we see you coming, we'll meet you. We'll meet you with the Bible, and we want to show you how you can know Christ. Would you come while we wait? Just slip out and come. Would you come while we wait? Would you come? Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else need to make their way to the altar tonight? Commit your home to the Lord. Lord, help me to be the mama, the daddy that you want me to be. Help me to be the grandparent. Lord, help, help my grandkids to see Jesus in me. pray you'd grant it tonight. Father, these folks that are burdened about their loved ones, burdened about their children, Father, I pray you'd give them the desires of their heart, please. God, wherever that child is tonight, I pray you to rest their, their spirit. God, help them to see their need of serving Christ, living in the will of God. Lord, bless every home this evening. God, keep us 
Keep us safe, Lord, from the Lord from the wiles of the devil. God, give us good godly homes. Help us to set the right example for our children. Lord, work in hearts, please. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you. sing this little chorus tonight you don't even need need the words necessarily Jesus loves me this I know for the Bible tells me so we're going to sing that through if you need to come altars are open folks are still getting some help let's sing it together tonight here we go ready Jesus loves me this I know to have you. Thank you for tuning in. There's a number on the bottom of your screen right now, 704-327-5662. And we have some people waiting right beside the phone, and they would love to take your call and pray with you tonight. I hope you'll call. If we can help you, I hope that you'll call right now and uh, reach for your phone and do that. We would love to pray with you this evening. Let's sing it. Let's sing it again tonight. Here we go. Ready? Jesus just for a moment if you will and Brother Abel if you'll just play for us just a moment and you be praying with us this evening
Pastor, can you do that? God is so good. Let's sing that tonight before we go. Ready? Here we go. God is so good. Well, let's try that again, buddy. Hit it again. people said amen amen well Al Shoemaker comes tonight Al raise your hand if you will right there Al's visiting from Pennsylvania isn't that great amen. and uh, and uh, Al gave his heart to Jesus tonight isn't that wonderful man that's so good <laughs> wonderful wonderful amen 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 we're proud of you buddy that's wonderful it takes courage to do that and uh and I appreciate that. I'm super proud of you tonight and all of you folks that have been saved here recently. Let me, let me give you a couple points of advice if I could. Number one, you need to get baptized. You need to follow in baptism. You, let, let, uh, you know, let us baptize you or a Bible-believing church somewhere baptize you. And then you need to tell everybody. Just tell everybody. I mean, now they're not all going to understand, but just tell them. Hey, I got saved. I got saved. I became a Christian, and uh, I asked Jesus to come in my heart and save me. And, and so be sure you do that. And Jesus said, if you'll confess me before me, and I'll confess you before my Father, which is in heaven. And so I hope that you'll do that. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, meet with you quickly, quickly, a couple of announcements, and, uh, and uh, just a couple items of business real fast, and we're going to be on our way. I'm going to let the guys run that video for us first. And, uh, and we're doing this for those that were all in, the, in kids' ministry this morning. So y'all go ahead, fellas. You can run that for us right now. in the service this morning and so here's what we said we need you to go ahead and start signing up right away we don't need your money right now but we need we do need to know how many are planning on going now we will be we will be a little bit later on we will be taking a, a deposit all right and it will be a, a no refund policy this year and uh and uh, we've had well anyway that's all i'll say i'm not going to go any further than that but uh, anyway we're going to do our best to make it just as economic uh, economical for you this year as we can and uh, the church always goes in a huge hole just to try to make it really, really nice for our couples. But it's going to be a great time. I hope you'll go. It's going to be in our first time in Greenville, South Carolina. 
and it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful venue, and you're going to enjoy the river walk, and uh, so I hope that you'll go. Now, uh, th this is the question that's already been asked, and it's a, a question that we're getting every year. What do you do if you have kids? And so here's, what we're, here's, what, here's our policy, that if you can invite someone to go with you, a grandma, a grandpa, aunt, uncle, cousin, somebody, and they can watch the babies while you're in session, that's fine with us. We don't mind, we don't mind you doing that. Um, but we just ask that there's no kids in, in the meeting area where we have the sessions at. And so we'll talk to, to you more about it as time gets a little closer, and that'll be fine. I'm going to let these guys come up and finish our announcements tonight. But let me mention, we mention a couple things as far as business is concerned. And so, church, we need to, uh, we need to, to add a couple cameras uh, to the service and, uh, and so you can ask Brother Evan about this, and he can give you all the, the uh, ins and the outs about it. Uh, anyway, two new PTC optics cameras and uh, the accessories that, you know, go with them to make them run, that kind of thing. And then also we're going to have to do a security system upgrade, and that's due to an overload. And uh, here again, I know you don't understand any of that, and guess what? Neither do I, Okay. Uh, when we were having Bible school, we had so many people on the Internet that it was uh, knocking our security feed off. And so Brother Evan had to pretty much just cancel the Internet for everybody. And so we need to do an upgrade so we're able to let people have, uh, you know, access to the, to the Wi-Fi. But also we can keep our security system up and running and all of our cameras and those kinds of things. And so whenever you start talking about things like this... It's never cheap, all right? Um, but anyway, it's going to be about $6,300 to do all, all of this. And uh, that's actually a good price. It really is a good price. And so that's one thing. But also, Brother Jerry Jones has been looking uh, for us for a little while. He uh, has a good friend at um, one of the local bus companies, the uh, uh, Newton Conover Bus Company, uh, where these buses are used for the school system and their uh, they are uh, maintained, and the oil is changed, and, and all that kind of thing. And so Brother Jerry talked to that gentleman and said, listen, when y'all get ready to release some buses, keep us in mind. And so his friend said, Jerry, I'll tell you what we'll do. Whenever we do get ready to release some, he said, we'll give Calvary the best bus we have. And uh, maintained all the paperwork on it, that kind of thing. And uh, they're going to let us have that bus for 2500 bucks. And so, you know, that's, a, that's a, about a no-brainer right there. So Brother Jerry's been running the van, and uh, he had a little down day today, but he's been, he's been, uh, the van's been capacity, uh, and sometimes over capacity. And so we need to do something different. We want to make sure everything is safe. We want to make sure everything is, is right when it comes to uh, any kind of a bus transportation that kind of thing, and so this bus would be maintained, it would be in good shape, and that kind of thing, but it's going to be about $2,500, and so uh, anyway, that's what we need to mention to you tonight, so uh, do I have a, uh, somebody that would like to make the motion tonight? Brother Mike, you making that motion this evening? Who wants to second that tonight? Brother Steve? All right, you'll second that motion tonight. All right, all in favor of that, say amen. amen. And if you have any questions about any of that, don't come to me, okay? All right. <laughs> I'm picking. I'm just picking. If you have any cameras, if if you have any cameras, if you have any questions about cameras and stuff like that, go find Brother Evan. Okay, he can answer that for you a lot better than I can. If you have questions about the bus, find Brother Jerry, and he'll be glad to answer your questions about the bus, and that that will be fine. Uh, don't forget maintenance team meeting right over here in the piano side. And so anyway, thank you guys. Thank you so much for bearing with us. Ethan, you come, and I'm gonna let you finish the announcements, and then Brother Keith. We're so glad to have you tonight. And uh, as soon as Brother Ethan finishes the uh, announcements, how about dismiss us in prayer, if you will. And uh, it's good to have the Bowmans with us this evening. And they're in a little bit of a transition right now. Brother Keith's been pastoring for a while, and they're in a little bit of a transition. We've been talking a lot, and I've enjoyed, always do enjoy talking to him. And he said, Preacher, he said, you might see us at Calvary some. And, and, and I said, Brother Keith, you're always welcome at Calvary. And, uh, and so you pray for them. And uh, Brother Keith's a good man, his dear wife, good preacher, and uh, we're glad to have him here tonight. And so as soon as Ethan's done with the announcements, Brother Keith will pray for us tonight. All right.
right. We don't want to mention these. Don't forget Awesome August. It's been an awesome August thus far. We've had two of our Thursday night services, and they have been wonderful. I've enjoyed them. But don't forget the rest of this month. We've got three more to go. It's going to be exciting. We've got great preachers lined up and great singers. So make sure that you put that on your calendars. I know many of you weren't able to come out this past because of the weather. But thank you. As preacher has said already a few times, thank you for those that came out. It was wonderful. Had a great time. Also, don't forget this. They're having a baby shower for Miss Ivy Williams, and that'll be this Friday, August the 16th at 6 p.m. It'll be here in the Fellowship Hall, and if you can RSVP with Mary Thomas, that would be great, and just let her know that you're going to be coming. That would be wonderful. Also, on that next slide, we've got our Calvary Baptist Church, the Family Day at the Hickory Crawdads game. That's coming up September the 7th, and that'll be at 7 p.m. It will be $25 per person. We've done it a lot for the Men of Valor and gone and done this, been great, but the ladies have all been complaining. They wanted to go, so we're doing a big family day. It's going to be awesome, and it'll be great. We'll love it. We'll all get to go, my wife included in that. She's like, well, why don't we get to go? Like, you get to go watch a ball game. Why don't I get to go? So they're going to get to come off, but August the 29th will be the cutoff date on that. Also on that next slide there, we're excited to have Brother Daniel Waters, Evangelist Daniel Waters. He'll be coming and preaching for us and no doubt singing a little bit for us there Sunday morning, September the 1st. He always does a wonderful job. Always love to have him. And then this next slide here. Our young adult bowling activity. Please don't forget that. And we'll be coming up August the 23rd, just two Fridays away at 7 p.m. And as I mentioned this morning, if you say, well, hey, I'm not a member of Calvary, that's fine. Please make plans to come and be with us. And we'll have a sign-up sheet here either tonight. I don't know if we have one tonight, but we'll have one Thursday and then next Sunday. Just so I can get a head count to let the bowling alley know who all's coming and how many to expect. We'll have that. And it'll be exciting. We're looking forward to it. I think Brother Raphael's got one announcement here real quick, and then we'll be done. So real quick, I just wanted to kind of give you guys an update about Children's Church this morning uh, with our back-to-school pep rally. We had an awesome day. We had uh, 60 kids uh, with 11 of them visitors. And so we gave away uh, some pencil boxes. Uh, the, my job that I work at, the Boys and Girls Club in, uh, in Cabarrus County, they had donated some book bags also with some school supplies in it. And so uh, we used those as prizes for best boy, best girl. And then we uh, also used... Uh, which was a very special thing. Miss uh, Dorla, um, before, the, before she passed away, she had got some pencil boxes together uh, to give out, and we gave some of our kids uh, those pencil boxes, and they absolutely loved them. And so, and then on top of that, uh, Brother Timmy and Miss Carrie had uh, got a, a boy's kid's Bible and a girl's kid's Bible and put it on top of that book bag and pencil box for Miss Dorla. And so it was just an awesome time. And the kids had a, so much fun, and we challenged them from Matthew 28, verse 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations. And so uh, we challenged them to say, you know, school comes first, as in, as in you as a kid, but also as a Christian, God comes first. And so you make sure that while you're in school, you're being a light to all that are around you, and that you are at reaching those, your teachers, your classmates, even the lunch lady with the big old mole on her cheek, you know, reaching all those people. And so, so we had a blast. We had cookies and cream. We had, what, cookie, cookie dough, chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream and vanilla ice cream. And they got to build them some great old, big old Sundays. And so we just got them all sugared up and sent them home uh, a little crazy. But it was absolutely fun. And uh, I just want to challenge your parents and uh, kids, remember, to make sure that you, you push your kids to, to spend time with God daily. And so, uh, because they need it, school is a hassle. Even if it's Christian school, even if it's home school, if it's public school, school is hard on these kids. And so, please, 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 just push them and encourage them to get some actual time with God so that they can actually have a great school year. And then we gave them a little keychain that had the verse, Matthew 28, verse 19 on it. And on the back of that keychain, it had a QR code that sends them to the church's website for, with Brother Brandon giving the gospel. So, because a lot of kids are very tech savvy these days. And so, we're like, hey, you know, you need Jesus. Here, scan this. And so, it's a keychain that they can just stick on their book bag and rock it around school and show their little Calvary pride. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, brother, if you want to go ahead and come up and close out in prayer. Thank you for joining us today. We consider it an honor to serve you. And our prayer 
is that the service was a blessing and an encouragement to your life. If you were impacted today by the preaching of God's word, we encourage you to respond. If we can pray with you, or if you would like to make a decision today for Christ, please call us here at 704-327-5662. We have people waiting right now on the lines prepared to help you. Again, thank you for joining us today, and we hope to welcome you again soon. Have a wonderful week. trumpet